traditional dating has changed drastically as young people make connections via technology and social media, my next guest wrote and produced the provocative documentary, The Dating Project, a film we told you about last month. As the film releases on DVD next week, I sat down with Catherine Fowler Sample to discuss its origins and how it transformed her life. Catherine, thank you for being here. Thank you for having what me. Like. Now, this was your idea. We had a Boston College professor on the show a few weeks ago, Carrie Cronin, who was kind of the centerpiece of this documentary. But you had this dating project idea before you even knew of Cronin's work. Correct. So the dating project really began one night in Santa Monica at a birthday party. Mm. And I was standing amongst a bunch of girls, about a dozen women in their 20s and 30s, and I looked around the room and realized everyone was single. Mm. And I was like, whoa, there's no reason that these girls shouldn't be in a relationship. And obviously there's nothing inherently wrong with being single, but I knew that a lot of the girls would want to be in a relationship if that was open to them. Mm -hmm. And so... That was really the catalyst moment to do this documentary. And I was in the film industry, and so my producing partner and I set out to make this movie, hmm. to really redefine dating and look at what's going on in dating culture, with hmm. what's going on with hooking up and hanging out and right. texting and all that sort of thing. And, and what did you find there that made you think you had a documentary in place? And what, what did that look like conceptually before you met Carrie Cronin? Well, as we began research, um, we came across the statistic that over 50% of America is single. Mm. And so that really bolstered the case that this is a documentary that needs to be made. Mm. And if you think about dating, it can be overlooked as almost like, oh, kids these days, like they'll grow mm. out of whatever they're doing in college. But what we were seeing is that it's something that people aren't growing out of. And that was one of the really surprising things And that as we were looking into interviewing people in college, their 20s, 30s, and 40s, it was something that the problems were the same. It, they were, you know, struggling with the same things that they were struggling with in college when they were in their 40s. So mm -hmm. it showed that there was patterns being established early in how we were doing relationships. Yeah, bad patterns. It, bad <laughs> patterns that, um, because there's really no social script to dating. And that's what we were finding in the start of our research and um, really kind of propelled us forward to know that this is a subject that needs to be addressed and so many people are interested in it. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, dating is what forms the marriages we have in society, which is what forms the children, which is really yeah. what forms the society we're living mm -hmm. in. So it's, I think, the premier social issue of our day. Well, as I said a moment ago, we spoke to Professor Carrie Cronin, who is at the centerpiece of this film. In fact, you kind of anchored it around her class and the assignment she gives to them. Here's Carrie Cronin talking about her work. So what actually happened was the first semester that I assigned it to a group of students, a group of seniors in a mm -hmm. capstone seminar, I said, just go on a date and then come back and we'll talk about it. Well, week after week after week, they came back and they just talked about it endlessly, but they didn't go on dates. And I thought, well, I don't think they know what they're doing. So the oh next gosh. semester, I actually wrote up an assignment and mm. the, I said to them, look, hookup culture has rules. You know what they are. Nobody's written them down, but you know what they are. You play by those rules. Mm -hmm. But dating has some really rules, some rules that are really helpful. Mm. So, so I wrote up the instructions and they really responded to that. Students, oh. the, it was like the coaching they needed, right? So the rules are things like, you know, you have to ask somebody out in person, which mm. is a huge obstacle for them. Mm -hmm. And when you ask, you should have a plan that's within three days of asking. And if you ask, you should pay. And, you know. It couldn't be more than $10. It shouldn't date. be more than $10 because you don't want to signal that it's overly serious or that it's Boy, that really rules high out stakes. dinner, I mean. <laughs> no, no, right, exactly. And I always say, oh, and it should be 60 to 90 minutes long. So I say ah. dinner is not a good idea for a first date because... Mm. That is a little over serious. That's the stakes are too high there. Mm. So I'm trying to teach them or coach them into sort of low stakes casual dating to sort of bring that back. You didn't know about her work at all when you started work on this documentary. Right. And stumbled into her. Yes. And it was so providential because we were setting everything up, you know, finding the people who we called our datables, which were our single mm. people that we <laughs> followed to Did show Did you cast them? Did you go through the whole 
classroom and find the best people? Well, we did. Well, in a way, it was it was almost like the six points of separation and mm -hmm. that we kind of put out the feelers that we're looking for, you know, college kids. We're looking for a girl in her 20s, mm -hmm. career girl in her 30s, guy in his 40s. And we ended up finding them through people very organically. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like these people were like acting or mm -hmm. like auditioning or anything like that. And um, they ended up all having just phenomenal presence and personalities. And mm -hmm. Carrie Cronin is someone who we did not expect um, to run into, but my sister who was in law school sent me an article that she came across on Facebook <laughs> and when we were starting you know, the project and she was like, oh my gosh, this seems like it's right up your alley and huh. boy was it because wow. Carrie Cronin really, she is so instrumental not only in the documentary but what she's doing on Boston College campus and in the culture at large because she's recasting a social script for dating mm. and it's crazy because when we were at Boston College, these kids were taking notes while she was giving the dating assignment and it's like oh well how how long should it be what should we talk about where should we go what if they say no and it was so earnest because they have no idea how to date they'd never had real dating experience they'd never they, had they, real dating this experience. is this they think is a date exactly they, they had all their relationships now I have to talk about you personally you Catherine were single when you started this project I was. what did you learn through the project and what has it taught you now that you're not only a wife, but a mother? Yes, well, that is a great question. And it's true, I was single, 26 years old, living in Los Angeles at the start of the project. Mm -hmm. And the idealist in me was like, I cannot wait to like tackle the subject of dating mm -hmm. relationships and make an impact in culture. But then another part of me was like, well, I hope I get something out of this myself. <laughs> and um, I did. Little did I know I would end up meeting the man that I ended up marrying. Mm -hmm. And How did um, you meet? Well, what happened was we were doing interviews and Carrie Cronin in one of her interviews that's in the film, she was talking about going off type. So it's like not going for the same type of person over mm -hmm. and over again. And I realized, you know, that's a profound piece of advice that maybe I could apply to my own life because I had been dating primarily people who were in the film industry, mm -hmm. you know, just people that you'd be meeting out in Los Angeles. and. Mm -hmm they had an artistic streak and they knew the value of movies like Casablanca and all mm -hmm. that kind of thing. The really important things when it comes yes. to choosing a life partner. But um, anyway, so I thought, well, I could apply this to my own life. And not long after, I ended up meeting an amazing man, and he was indeed off type. Um, I mean, he was on type in that he was tall, dark, and handsome. Okay. Um, but he was off type in that he wasn't in the film industry, had never seen a movie like <laughs> Casablanca, you know, that sort of thing. Well, that gives and you something to introduce him to. Exactly. It's the beginning of a wonderful friendship. Exactly. So we um, ended up really hitting it off. And and fell in love and got married and had a baby and now have a beautiful baby girl and so all of that really was my little personal kind of testimony takeaway of the dating project and the impact it had on my life. Mm. Now you've written a book the dating yes. project coming out in June what's there that you can't find in the documentary? Well there was so much that got left on the cutting room floor mm -hmm. just by nature of the fact that you've only got 72 minutes to tell the story and you don't want to muddle things but it's really like a field notes type guide mm -hmm. if you think of like an anthropologist like going mm -hmm. through a culture and it has you know just more quotes more things that people said that we weren't able to incorporate and in the one night event for the movie there was a Q&A afterward and everybody stayed. Like mm. across the country, people were saying, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe people were sitting in their seats after the credits rolled to hear more about dating and relationships because it's, it's kind of a subject that's limitless and that mm. there's so many different facets to um, what goes on, you know, and what people want to learn and be able to apply to their own and lives. And what do you hope, not only young people, but older adults struggling with this, what do you hope they come away with? What's the two takeaways that you want them to have after reading the book, or seeing the film, The Dating Project? Well, I would say the two takeaways, one would be how the film ends, date differently. Mm. Have the you know, inspiration and the courage to be able to step outside of the dominant social script of hookup culture and mm -hmm. maybe the technology traps that we've fallen into mm -hmm. and all of that. And the second takeaway would just be hope in that we have the opportunity to change this heart to heart person to person because that's how it started to unravel mm. and it's wonderful because we don't have to wait on the government or an organization to make a change in order for us to start living differently and I think that once we start to equip ourselves with the knowledge of even the basics of going on a date it will totally change the way we're interacting with one another and really treating each other as sons and daughters of God and um, it can 
it can really start a movement to change mm. culture and how we do relationship. Mm. Catherine Fowler Sample, thank you for being here. The Dating Project DVD written by Catherine Fowler Sample and featuring Dr. Carrie Cronin is available in stores everywhere and online on June 5th. By the way, longtime viewers of EWTN will remember Catherine as one of the singing Fowler sisters. The network often aired them singing during the Christmas season. Thank you.